I don't want to do my own horn, but you guys are going to get a lot smarter from this video. Let's go. Streaming PCs have been around for quite a while, and, and there are some advantages to running a completely dedicated streaming PC. I mean, there's a reason uh, that, that this is exactly what I do. But what a streaming PC looks like today and the options you have available is very different than what it used to be. The quality of X264 encoding was by far the best, meaning there's no reason to encode with anything other than your CPU, again, using X264. So a lot of people building a dedicated streaming PC wouldn't even bother putting a GPU in their system because uh, this CPU is handling almost all the processing, the rendering, and the encoding. And that money you spend on a GPU would be much better spent on a beefier CPU. Well, this is where some things have changed, where Nvidia has recently released in their RTX line of cards, their new Turing encoder, which is a brand new dedicated encoder on their GPUs that rivals the quality of X264 medium, which is essentially uh, kind of the goal that we're all aiming towards. That's that's the quality bar right now is X264 Medium. And now there is a dedicated chip that can do just that. Plus there are some advantages to encoding with a completely separate chip. One, uh, if everything's being done on your CPU, let's say you run a, a Stinger transition and you get two alerts happening at the same time and you have an animated, basically enough happens to overload that CPU, you're also overloading your encoder if you're running X264 because well, the encoder is the same chip that's running those other processes. With the encoding being done on a completely separate chip, that thing is isolated and safe. Your encoding never takes a hit, while maybe your alerts and stuff might drop a couple frames. This begs the question though, if you're running an NVENC based streaming PC, uh, how much does the CPU even matter? I mean, back when you'd run an X264 streaming PC, the GPU didn't matter. If you're encoding with your GPU, does your CPU matter that much? If you're offloading the bulk of that processing onto a completely separate chip, can you stream with a Ryzen 3 or, or cheaper? At what point is the money spent on a CPU going to waste? That's what we're gonna find out today. By the way, before we get into the testing, I do just wanna remind you that I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Twitch. Link to that down in the description below. Also, uh, if you enjoy stuff like this, let us know. Hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, hit the bell, all the, all, all, all you, know the you know the things. Anyway, let's get over to the testing. Got the system ready to go. See on the left side over here, we got our numbers. So you can see the usage percentage of the GPU, uh, all four CPU cores, and then the CPU. Just to see what quality we're streaming at, if we go into here, you can see we're streaming at 1080p, 60 frames per second, bicubing, bicubic, bicubic downscaling filter. We're using NVENC new with a bitrate of 6,000 kilobits per second. Uh, I talked about it before. I don't suggest going 6,000 for affiliates because if you don't have transcoding options, a lot of viewers will get a lot of lag and buffering. But I want to give you guys some headroom for whenever either Twitch opens up transcoding for affiliates or you guys have partner and you want like a solid six kilobit per second stream, 6,000 kilobits per second stream. So also the preset is set to low latency quality. So you guys have as little latency between you and your chat as possible. Anyway, those are all the settings. Let's fire up the Ryzen 3 stream. So you can see I've got the preview turned off because that actually tends to make a pretty big difference in terms of CPU usage. We'll turn it back on in a little bit when we start pushing it and see where it can go. All right, so we've been streaming for about five minutes. Haven't dropped a single frame yet, although what we're running real quick is, is pretty simple. We've got the camera, or we've got the uh, the PC over here being captured in this capture card, and we've got a camera running. We have no alerts popped up on stream. We have no overlays. Um, we've done tests with this before, and I know it can handle a static overlay, and now we've added a full-on GPU to it. So let's start by adding an animated overlay around the camera. All right, good CPU usage still at 18%. At least in OBS. You can see we got a couple peaks over here at certain times. Uh, let's toss in some alerts. That did jump the CPU usage up from about 25% up to about 35%. Now that the encoding has been taken off the CPU and, and dropped on the GPU, uh, the CPU still gets used a lot by things like animations, especially WebM files. Those are the big suckers of the CPU. <laughs> I can use that term. But before the CPU was doing both the encoding and handling the animations, now that the, it's, and now that it's really only doing one of those things, it's really light in the load. Before when we were doing the X264 encoding, we could do one alert at a time with no animated overlay. Let's toss in an alert 
Oh, you can see that spike right there. Just jumped the CPU up to 70%. GPU didn't jump much. And that's because that's WebM files are CPU, pretty CPU heavy. That jumped up to about 70% at its peak right there. Let's drop two at the same time. Okay, follower and sub alert. Oh, we got another peak over there. Still didn't see him get up past the 70s. GPU's fine. GPU's not being touched at all by this. And not a single dropped frame. I got one more thing I want to throw on here. We got an animated background. So basically a, a looping animation. I'll show you in a little bit when we animate the preview. I wanna see if we can get this far without dropping a frame. But basically an animated looping video that co covers up about one quarter to one third of the screen is simulating what would happen if you had like an intermission screen. You had a lot of your, a lot of your screen being taken up by some kind of animated background. So right now we've got an animated background and animate overlay around the camera and we're gonna to toss two alerts. You can already see a big spike in the CPU up to the high 60s and yeah, not a single dropped frame. Let's toss in our stinger transition, which you can't see, but it's happening. I want you to trust me here, it's happening. Let's toss in two alerts and the transition at the same time. That's what killed the Ryzen 5 during the X264 setup. Not a single dropped frame. We had a stinger transition going, animated overlay. I don't know. We had every we, we just threw everything at it. The last thing we can do is enable this preview. All right. Final test, throwing every single thing at it. So we've got a camera, we've got a capture card, we've got an animated border, we've got a big blob of animated screen over here, and we're gonna toss. Oh, and we got the preview window open. Now we're gonna toss two alerts at it at the same time, a follow alert and uh, a sub alert, which are both WebM files. Not a single drop frame. Went up to 79, the highest the CPU got was 79% on the Ryzen 3. All right, we'll, we'll do this with the Ryzen 5. I almost feel like the Ryzen 7 is gonna be a waste of time. Let's give it a shot. All right, we're gonna add one last test to the Ryzen 3. The only problem I have with what's going on, if we're gonna really throw everything at it, we've got a static screen going on in the background, which is really gonna more impact the encoding than the actual processing, but I wanna see what everything we've done, what it looks like when we've got a game running. And so we've got our gamer here. I'm such a gamer. Okay, right over there, you're gonna right click on it to open it up. Right click on it. There you go. Now you're in the world, okay. You can just hold it, by the way. Hold on. It's important that we just know I dropped a stinger transition, two alerts with WebM files at the same time, and you were playing a game and did not drop a Will single. Will I drown if I'm in the water? Oh, I want to go pet yeah. the sheep. Yeah, go go up to it with the bone and then click on it. It'll pet it. It's not going to pet it. It's going to kill no, it. No, no. It's just going to pet it. Click. You got to aim at it. There you go. There you go. No, I don't want to hurt it. Good job. I didn't want to hurt it. I wanted to pet it and make it my friend. Here, do it again. It'll pet it this time. You're a liar. <laughs> The important lesson that we're getting from this though, we have a game playing with an end with everything. We threw everything at it, all the things I mentioned before, but with gameplay happening with a stinger transition and two animations at the same time. And the CPU peaked at 85%. Let's throw on the Ryzen 5 and let's see what the CPU gets up to when we throw everything at it from there. Oh, these things are pretty. Don't you think these are pretty? Very. This is your style of art, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We're not the safest place for computers on the carpet. I'll get a better place for these guys. All right, Ryzen 5. We're gonna do a couple things here. We got the Ryzen 5 built here. We're gonna do everything again and throw everything at it and see what percentage at. We peaked at around 85% on the Ryzen 3. I can already tell right now here on the, uh, the overall CPU usage, uh, we were usually around mid 20s with the Ryzen 3 and we're down below 10 on the Ryzen 5. So already, I mean, we're not live. I guess let's go on. Shouldn't make a huge deal for the CPU though. GPU is looking exactly the same, but CPU usage is so much lower. And again, no dropped frames. We got an animated overlay. We got the big old block of animation going on right here. I'm gonna fire off a couple of alerts and hit the transition. We're gonna see what happens. Alert, transition. <laughs> you get to 31%. That's the highest I could get it. I'm dropping two WebM alerts and a stinger, a WebM stinger transition at the same time. I mean, we have we have half of our cores at 0% right now. And we're live. What? Yeah, isn't that nuts? It's so crazy. Your mind is blown right now. Yep. So it looks like we're, we're hitting between 24, 25, up to 30. 31 was the peak that we hit. Let's uh, pull this apart. Let's, let's swap out the, the 2070 with the 1660, and let's just see if 
this is carrying any of the CPU's load and then swapping down to a lesser GPU is gonna change anything at all for the CPU. It's interesting that when you're using X264, the minute you hit go live, because the CPU starts doing all the encoding, usually the CPU usage will jump up by about uh, three times the load. Whereas with a GPU, when you're using NVENC, because there's actually a dedicated encoder built into it that's for nothing but encoding, you go live and nothing changes. All you're doing is activating the encoder that's just sitting idle inside the GPU. So no nothing changes while you're encoding. All right, let's drop the alerts and the stinger transition at the same time. It peaked at 25. Let's try it a couple times, see if we can get it larger than that. Absolutely, absolutely no change at all. It was interesting that when we first started, the CPU was idling at like 10%, and now that we've gotten it moving, it's going back down to like five to seven. So I don't think there's any difference at all between using a fancy GPU and fan using a 1660. I'm interested to see what the difference would be if you're doing a super involved stream setup with multiple sources. I can't, I can't even think of what I'm doing that's more intense than this. I think I overpowered my, my streaming PC. I probably could have paid half the cost and gotten the same. Same setup, sorry. Why are you telling me that? Because <laughs> cause I'm dumb. So that was way better than I expected. I assumed we'd be dropping some frames on the Ryzen 3, and we wouldn't really see any headroom until we got to the Ryzen 7. Uh, but it turns out there was really no point in even opening it. I think I literally bought the 3700X for this video and never even had to open it because there was just so much headroom left on the Ryzen 5. So I guess all that's left is uh, my recommendation. If you're building an NVENC based streaming PC, uh, what would you, what should you spend your money on? First, GPU. Uh, clearly there was absolutely no difference going from the 2070 to the 1660. And this, this is expected because they actually both have the exact same encoder in them. As I mentioned before in the video, while there is a difference in power between GPUs, the encoder itself is literally Literally exactly the same piece of hardware. It is important to note though, if you're planning on using the RTX broadcast engine, I don't have all the information on me right now, but I do believe if you want to get those cool features they're coming out with soon, like a green screen without a green screen, face mapping, all those really cool things that I got to test out at TwitchCon, you might need an actual RTX card. I'll have more info on that at CES. I'll be meeting up with them there. But other than RTX broadcast system, I don't see any solid reason to go with anything other than a 1660. You can get an MSI 6 1660 on Amazon right now for, I wanna say like 217 bucks. But past that onto the CPU, I wanted to find an interesting middle ground because the Ryzen 3, the 3200G, and we peaked up at like the high 80%. It concerned me how close we were to maxing out that 3200G, especially since we didn't have a ton of sources going on. However, the Ryzen 5, the 3600 had way more headroom than we needed. Definitely would like some uh, middle ground in there. So while there is a 3400G, I'd actually probably recommend a 2600. Uh, the previous generation, it's got higher specs than a 3400G and it's cheaper. It's just missing the integrated graphics, which you don't need because there's a GPU in this build. I don't have one on me to test, which of course, anytime you make a YouTube video, that makes me a little bit nervous. But given how well the 3600 performed and then the comparative benchmarks of the 2600, I feel like that's most likely the sweet spot of the CPU that you should throw in a GPU based build. I mean, the 2600 on Amazon right now is about $117. That makes it only $30 more than the Ryzen 3 that we tested today, which means I most likely uh, severely overpowered my streaming PC and none of that stuff was necessary. <laughs> It is what it is, you live and you learn, you know? And once we go through more of these tests like this and we go through the optimal single PC setup and the optimal two PC setup, I, I'm really interested in seeing which one makes more sense financially to buy a second streaming PC or upgrade your current PC to uh, to be a single PC setup and what the advantages of each are. A lot of a lot of ways to go on this channel, a lot of tests, a lot of builds. I'm looking forward to it. Well, <laughs> update for you guys. I finished filming this video at 2 a.m. last night and this morning I wake up and NVIDIA has launched a new GPU. <laughs> fantastic, thank you guys. Actually, I shouldn't complain about it. This is actually fantastic news for this kind of setup. I just, you know, wish they'd released this yesterday for me. But NVIDIA announced this morning the 1650 Super, which has now become the cheapest GPU with their new Turing encoder built into it, coming in at like 50 to $60 cheaper than the 1660. 
And as you saw from the test, the 1660, while it was encoding, never peaked above 35%. So I think this is an all around win for everybody. If you're planning on streaming, building an NVENC streaming PC, and you don't care about that RTX broadcast engine, or you're okay with upgrading to it in the future, uh, this is a great buy. I think I saw it, it was uh, retailing for 160 bucks. Of course, when it comes out, we'll test it, make sure it's a solid machine, but uh, there you go. You're planning on using this to build a Turing-based streaming PC. 1650 Super is a great buy. But again, guys, if you have any questions about this, feel free to jump in my chat. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and answer a ton of questions. Link to that down in the description below. Also, we have a massive community of people, uh, many of whom have done streaming PC builds. If you have any questions, you can jump in the Discord and hit up people there. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video. We've got a metal cage here that houses the um, rainbow, RGB discs that help. And this that is a fan that cools everything down. Um, you also have got lots of cables that are important because they're like the life support of the machine, as you all know. Um, this is a gigabyte, um, as it says, and um, it basically powers the whole thing. Just keeps it running, you know, nice and smooth. Um, and this has been a great video by the Stream Doctor. Uh, you know, subscribe to stop hearing me speak nonsense. <laughs> In the stream. When you're streaming, when you're encoding with your GPU, it's a completely separate chip that if you're not... Oh, a creeper, a creeper, a creeper! <laughs> what? You run so quick. <laughs>